Hi guys, on today's tutorial we are going to learn how to use the Moisture Sensor Groove. To demonstrate it, we've created a three-state system. Dry soil, ideal conditions and flooded soil. Let's get started. To get more information, visit our social web at garagelab.com. To buy one of our products, go to garagelabstore.com store. And don't forget to subscribe at our YouTube channel. This device can detect the moisture of soil or judge if there is water around it. The moisture sensor is pretty easy to use and represents an excellent alternative to automation projects. Its main applications are as water sensor and moisture sensor for gardening. Some projects use the sensor to sound an alarm, warning it's time to water. Others use it to turn this process completely automatic, where an actuator responds depending on the sensor state. This sensor works with the electrical resistivity of the soil that it is attached to, and varies depending on the soil moisture conditions. The voltage range is from 3.3 to 5 volts. The current range is from 0 to 35 milliamps. In a dry soil, the sensor response varies from 0 to 300. In a humid soil, from 300 to 700. And inside of water, from 700 to 950. As you can see, the cable has four wires. We will use three on this project. The black one, there is the ground. The red one, there is the power. And the yellow one, there is the signal that will provide information to our green one. We have here three samples of soil. The first one is the dry soil, tagged with green. The second one is the ideal condition, tagged with blue. The third one is the flooded soil, tagged with red. We are going to test the first condition. To do this, you have to attach your sensor directly to the soil sample, like this. Now we are going to run the software. Notice that the green LED turned on and a melody started to play. That's the sign that we need to put water in our soil. Look at the sensor values on the screen, they are really low, mostly zeros. If you take off the sensor from the soil sample, the condition will be the same, because the value of the sensor will be zero. Let's turn to our second sample, ideal conditions. Notice that the blue LED turned on and the melody stopped. Let's look to the transition again. Please, note the sensor values on your screen. There are values above 500 and below 700. Now, let's test our last condition, flooded soil. Notice that the red LED turned on, and a different melody started to play. That's the sign that it put too much water 
inner soil. Take a look at the values on the screen. There are values above 700. Now we are going to do a last test, going from one condition to the other by adding water. We have here dry soil and gradually we put water. Now, from the ideal soil to the flooded soil. This is just an example of this tool. You can use it in a way suitable for your project. To get more information, visit our social web. Let's look at our sketch. A pretty simple one. Firstly, we declared our variables. All of them integer. The first one is really important, it's called sensor pin. It's responsible for receive the analog sign from the sensor. The second variable is also important, it's called sensor value. It is responsible for store the value from the previous variable. The others are just the LEDs and the buzzer. Let's turn briefly to our loop. Our loop begins with the command serial.print. Inside of quotes, we put the word sensor and uh, equal sign. This of these, it's when you are open your serial monitor, you can see the word sensor and an equal sign before the actual value, making it easier to understand and more organized. Now we read and store the value from the sensor. To read, we use the command analog read. Sensor pin is that variable we've created addressed to the analog end, and sensor value is the variable which will store this value. The command serial.println will print for us the value from the sensor that we can see in the serial monitor. It's the value you see here. And then we start the if logic to obtain the state from the LEDs and from the buzzer. The first if has a condition, values below 300, dry soil. So, we will turn on the green LED and turn off the other two LEDs. After doing this, we use the command tone that is meant to create a sound. The first number here is the pin addressed to the buzzer. The second number is the frequency played. And the third number is the duration of the sound. Notice that we repeated this command with different frequencies in order to create a melody. The other logics are pretty similar. We change the range of the conditions. This one starts from values above 300 and below 700. Ideal conditions. So, we turn on the blue LED and turn off the other two LEDs. Notice that in this scenario we don't have a buzzer playing. Finally, the last condition. Values above 700 that is flooded soil. So, we turn on the red LED and turn off the other two LEDs. Notice we have again a melody playing, but it's a different one because we have chosen different frequencies. So guys, that's it. Pretty simple, isn't it? I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and visit our social web. See you!